Okay, in this video, I'll keep it very short and simple. I want to show you how to make a common mode current detector the crazy ham way. Very simple. So, of course, first of all, you need one of these clip on ferrites and make sure you choose a size that's going to be suited to your needs. And then get yourself a parallel wire, like you know, a speaker cable, very skinny, two wires. You could use um, to make because this is a bit bulky. You could to go skinnier. Use um, two enameled copper wires. So the key thing is that you've got two parallel wires that are not shorting together. So whether it's enameled or coated like this, so you need the key. It's very important the two parallel wires. So um, and basically what we're doing with the two parallel wires, as you can see here is winding along this um, this ferrite. So I've got this, uh, what I've done here, you can probably see, I mean, you could do it your own way. I've actually utilized the tiny little hole um, and forced it through the hole so it holds it there. But essentially, it's going um, one turn around and two turns around, right? So that's technically one complete turn, two complete turns. And if we look over at the back, then it swing comes over here. Another complete turn. This is turn number three. Now, with that, you need to leave enough leeway for you to be able to close it, right? You don't want to have that too tight and then not be able to close it, all right? So, just backtracking. So, we've got um, this one coming around. One turn, two turn. And then three turn, so here it is, three turns, right? And then four turns, five turns, and then six turns. So six turns of the twin wires. And then what you'll notice is I then bring the this end of the twin wires, I sneak it in and under and around over here. Now it doesn't have to be in and under. But the, the essential thing is, is you have your, your turns, six turns, so one, two, three, four, five, six, all along in the same direction. But we need the far end to come back towards the beginning, and that's why I've ducked it underneath. So that's the essential part there. And we know now that we can also um, close the, um, the little gizmo. So now we've got these... Uh, both of the ends together, right? So what we need to do is you can see here I've got a black stripe on one of these wires. I mean, you could be using a red and black or like I said, um, just um, to um, a, a twisted pair of enamel copper wire would be perfectly fine. Sorry about this. I really didn't prep very well. <laughs> All right. So I'm separating the wires now. But like I said, if you um, use a, a, par a twisted pair of enameled copper wire, you have to use a continuity meter or something to check which one is which, okay? It's very important, so you don't want to get this wrong. So looking at this, I've got my, on this end, my black wire. I want the far end of this black wire right, to come back and connect with this end white wire. So the far end is this one, this pair. So I've got my little black wire at the far end now. And uh, you probably will use wire strippers or something. <laughs> I always use a lighter. So I've got my first, my beginning black wire. And I'll just get that sorted there and I've got my far end and let's double check black wire I was kind of stuffed that up didn't I I don't want the far end black wire going to the beginning black wire so I'll put that aside so the far end black wire has to actually connect to the beginning end white wire or you know the opposite wire so kind of nearly stuffed that up but this is going to be fine so Again, so we've got the black wire at this end. We find it at the other end. 
and then we connect it to the opposite wire from the beginning end. Okay, so as rough as guts as I am, you can do it much neater. I'm just showing you the basic principle. All right, so and I'm going to have to snip that off in a minute. But now what we have essentially is from the black wire at the, at the beginning end, we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six turns. It then doubles back and connects to the white wire, which does one, two, three, four, five, six turns. So essentially, with the two other wires now, sorry, these two, the ones like the, the, the two ends, from here it's going six turns around, doubling back to the opposite wire, and then six turns around again, right? This is quite important. Now, I'm going to strip that, get that ready too. So, um, and I'll get some snips. Now, so basically now, it is just like a normal inductor where we've got connecting at each end, okay? Except it's going around twice. So this goes three turns and then another, right, three turns here, three turns there, connects back to the opposite wire, which again does three turns and three turns and comes out, okay? So now I've um, just trimmed the excess off. So we've got our two far ends. So from here to here, it's having to do six turns and then another six turns to get to here, okay? And this is where the, let's say, the black wire at the beginning connects to the white wire from the far end, okay? To allow for, allow for that double run around the core. And all we do next, okay, it's extremely simple, is at, on each of these wires, we simply add two diodes, right? So at the end of this wire, I'd, I'd suggest one end 60p um, germanium diodes. You basically just want diodes with uh, that you know um, don't uh, <laughs> need a higher voltage to to get current to flow, and you want a reasonable uh, you know quick response. So yeah, I suppose shock keys would be fine, but I'd suggest germaniums. But either way. So basically, from this wire now, this, so we've got the two ends of the inductor. This end will connect to two diodes in a push-pull configuration. So one with the line going out and one with the line coming in. And on the other one, we'll also do the same. We'll have two diodes, one going out and one coming in. So in other words, at each end now, this wire will then produce with the two diodes a pause and a an neg, and this one will produce a pause and a an neg. And what we'll do is we'll connect the pause from each end, the diodes together, and the neg from each end of the diodes. And then we can simply look at it with a multimeter from in, a, in DC. So the great thing about this is you could actually leave it in line. So you could literally clip it anywhere you wanted once it's all set up on your transmission line so that whenever you need to, you can go up to it with your multimeter, just put your probes on and see, uh, get a relative common mode current reading. Now it won't be an, uh, a specific reading because it's gonna depend on the thickness of the wire and the type of ferrite in the core and all that sort of stuff. But the thing is, it will give you a relative reading. You'll be able to do an experiment. You'll be able to put it on where, you know, you've got hardly any common mode currents and see what your reading is. And you'll be able to set up to deliberately have common mode currents, like um, having a piece of coax running from your radio and only connecting the center conductor and leaving the shield loose. And then you'll get a lot of common mode currents and you'll, know, and you'll see that's a, a really high reading. So you'll be able to do it that way. So just stand by. So now I've got uh, four little uh, 1N60P germanium diodes. And you can see they've got the little black band at one end. So that's the end that will be positive. So the idea will be, like I said, so on one end of our inductor, we'll have a diode 
with the positive outward and we'll get another diode and make sure the band is pointing inward okay so these will connect to that wire so it's like a push pull right and we'll do exactly the same with the other two diodes on the other wire okay whoops and then we will connect the two positives on the out, outside of the diodes and the two negatives and that will be where we'll take our read from so as you can see I've twisted oops hopefully this focuses um, one end of the two diodes together and you, as you can see where the black bands are one's going in and one's going out we have to do that with both sets so that's that one done and I'll do the next one so let's have a look here I'll just get this so uh, oh yeah so one push out one pull in and I'll just twist these together okay right and um, so we've got exactly the same thing one in one out all right now I'm just doing this really rough you can do a super neat version or fancy but I'm just doing showing you the basics of what to do and then you can make it as fancy as you want right so I am being as rough as guts just twisting it all on no solder no nothing so now one end of the inductor is connected to two diodes in a push-pull configuration and we'll do the same now at the other end of the inductor you know the two far ends of the 12 turns because it is 12 it's six and then coming back and six again so but there's a good reason for doing that um, this is that's actually how the tesla's bifiler pancake coils work too uh, although they're all flat and spiraling outward, the idea is it spirals outward on one, and then connects back to the middle on the other and spirals outward again. And that way, particularly with those when they're in serious resonance, then half of the voltage applied to the system is always between the two wires. So you've not only got your magnetic inductance, but you've got your dielectric inductance occurring at the same time. And uh, it makes for a more efficient system. So, we're pretty much ready to go. <laughs> what I need to do now is making sure that I don't make silly mistakes. So, this one has the black band pointing outward. And I'll look at the other side. And that one has, let me see, I'll bring them around to each other. I'll just, I sort of can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll now, so the the two that have the black band pointing outwards, I'm now connecting together, okay? And I'll just make sure I got this right. The um, two that have the black band pointing inwards, I'll put their ends together. So now, of course, we'd have to make sure we keep the, <laughs> these separate, the ends of you know, each end of the inductor. So we've got each end of the inductor going to two diodes in a push-pull configuration. The positive ends join and the negative ends join. And we'll clip this over our cable and simply read with the DC multimeter from the sorry from these points simple as that so now I've placed the um, the device just over a piece of coax where I'm deliberately going to be transmitting and what I've done is I'm only connected on the center conductor here so it will definitely have a lot of activity on the shield this is very rough. I've literally just got my multimeter terminals resting, like I said, one on the positive coming out from the diodes and one on the negative, okay? And in DC, and I'll just transmit, oops, wrong one. There we go. 
So you can see we're getting a good 6 volt DC there, alright? Now, I'll plug this in. So that's enough. I can tell by the sound. And now I'll transmit. And you see, we're getting 0.144. So the great thing about using the multimeter for it is it'll work in any range, okay? Now, um, just stand by. Now, uh, previously I built this one. And instead of using a multimeter, I, I was using a 50 microamp meter. Now, essentially, oh, it's messy as, I didn't want to use a box or anything, I was just like, throw it together, see if it works. So I literally used one of those um, big, stiff paperclip things, and glued the same size um, little gizmo on, exactly the same configuration that I've just shown you, and then it goes to the diodes, just as I said, and uh, to the meter, except with this one, I've got it going via a 100K resistor, which I'll probably go for a higher resistor so I can pull it down even more. And so um, I'll demonstrate this one. It's exactly the same configuration, stand by. So now she's clipped over, same piece of coax. I'll transmit, this should be a low value. This is quite sensitive, All right? I'll turn up the sensitivity. Very little going on there, right? Now I'll just stop that transmit. And now, I will just take this, disconnect the shield, just have center pin. Oh, this is just dodgy, I'm not, I don't even have an antenna set up because it's all relative, so I'm just showing you. So now, it should have a lot of activity on the shield. There you go. Now this has adjustable sensitivity, maximum down to minimum. You can see why I'm thinking of a, a, um, maybe a 100K instead of a 1K variable. So I can pull it down more if there was higher uh, common modes. So, but it is the same working principle. But I think in a way this is better because all you need is a multimeter. You've got no range limit so simple to do and you can even leave it anywhere on your coax on any system you could make a bunch of them leave them wherever you need them and whenever you want to check just go up with your multimeter so you don't have to leave it messy like this you come up with a nice neat way of doing it but that is the simple working principle now i will uh, just quickly draw up a schematic um, just to make sure that everyone understands what i've just uh, tried to explain and there we have it, so extremely simple. So we've got our inductor, so six turns, that then doubles back and does another six turns. One end of the inductor coming to these two diodes, the other end of the inductor coming to these two diodes. So each end has a push and a pull, push and a pull. And the two pushes join together as the positive and the two poles join together as the negative and it's the positive and negative is where we um, tap with the multimeter or if you were to make the other version with an actual uh, current meter and then you'd have to throw in you know a um, uh, variable resistor like a potentiometer 73 and thanks for watching